And finally, let's look at present value. Now, present value is just a way for us to be able to compare two different options that you might be facing where there's some time inconsistency. One is at a different time than the other, so it's not clear which option might be better. For example, let's say somebody again wants to give you some money and they're giving you a few different options and you're kind of trying to wonder, hey, you know, which one should I take? So let's say one option is that they're just going to give you $1,000 right now. That's it. Another option is let's say that they're going to give you $2,000, but it's three years from now. And a third option is that they're going to give you 300 bucks a year starting now, let's say for 40 years or something. So now here's the, here's why it's not obvious which option is the best it's because money in the future is kind of not worth as much as it is today, right? Because if you were given money today, I mean, not only is there the impatience factor, but you also could just put it in a bank account or something and start earning interest on it. So, that's why $1,000 today is way better than if I were to say, hey, I'll give you $1,000 a year from now. Because let's say the interest rate's 12%. If, uh, if I were to give you 1000 now as opposed to 1000 a year from now, by taking the 1000 now, you could just put it in a bank and a year from now, you'll have another $120 in the bank account. So that's better than if I were to just give you 1000 a year from now. This way you get 1120 a year from now. So, you know, 1000 plus 120 So either way, here, the way to evaluate these options are to put them all in terms of today's dollars, right? So what would the equivalent be in cash right now? Now, the present value, here's the grand formula, the present value of X dollars given to you N years from now is this, is X divided by one plus R to the N. Now, one thing about this formula is you can clearly see that n, the number of years into the future you actually get the money, the bigger that n is, that's a bigger denominator, which means an overall smaller number. That's why money given in the future is kind of not worth it. If you were to say, what's, what's more valuable, $100,000 given to you five years from now or $100,000 given to you 30 years from now? Well, the one given to you 30 years from now is really not worth that much to you right now, right? So. Uh, the sooner, the better, the higher the present value of it, sooner if it's a lower end. In fact, what if the end, what if you were given that money right now? The end is zero, zero years from now. Well, then the present value of X dollars given to you zero years from now, let's just plug in zero for N. Anything to the zeroth power is one. So that's just X over one. So it's just X, which means for option A, the present value is simply going to be a thousand dollars because a thousand dollars given right now is a thousand over one you know, to the zero or whatever that is to the zero. So now we want to compare the present value of this guy to a thousand. So the way we're going to find it is you're given $2,000. So that's your X, $2,000 you're given. How many years from now? Three years from now. Now here's what this is. The larger the interest rate, that's kind of like how much money you could have earned, right? It's like your opportunity cost. It's what you're giving up. Now, the more you're giving up, the less the present value, right? So if the interest rates in the world are really high, like you can get like 50% interest, then you really much rather have the money now so you could put it in the bank and get interest out of it, right? So if somebody's like waiting more into the future to give you that money, then it's really not worth that much because you're losing all that interest. So that's why in this case, if the interest rate's 12%, then that's one plus 0.12. So that's 1.12 in this case to the third. So whatever that is, notice it's not obvious. We already know that that's going to be less than 2,000 because you're dividing by a number bigger than one but it's not obvious what that number is. So you do the math and you know, you'd be able to find that. And then for this one, for option C, you're given 300 a year starting now for four years. So this is a little bit weird, but it's really just an application of this. Let's see, you're given $300. The first $300 that you're given is zero years from now. So the present value is of that $300 is just 300 divided by, you know, 1.12 to the zero. So it's just 300. But then the 300 bucks that you get a year from now, so here's the thing, at the end of the day, your temptation might be to say, wait, isn't this just worth 1200 bucks, 300 a year for four years, so 300 added four times? But here's the thing, all these 300s aren't created equally. They're given to you in different time periods. This is given right now, so its present value is 300. This is a year from now, so it's divided by 1.12. That's two years from now, so that's 1.12 squared. That's three years from now, so that's 1.12 cubed. So notice, the more into the future it is, the lower the present value. 
So in conclusion, if we actually do the math, it turns out that looking at these three present values, the best thing is option B because 1423 is bigger than 1020.5 and 1000. So this is like the most preferred. And then if you have to choose between A and C, notice it's not obvious, 1000 bucks versus 1200. But the 1200 is, you know, over time, you know, so it's not clear whether it was going to be worth more than the 1000. And here it just barely made the cut, so that is better than the 1000, so this is the worst in this case.